Researchers were looking for large ocean mussels when they sent a robotic submarine 6,000 feet under the ocean surface. The target was the Heco Scar near Costa Rica. Charlotte Seed is the collection manager for benthic invertebrates at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. It's an area where methane is coming up from the seafloor, but at a slightly higher temperature than the rest of the ocean, which apparently is enough to attract animals that normally only like it hot at hydrothermal vents. You should be able to see an almond footprint. The researcher piloting the Schmidt Ocean Institute's unstaffed submersible has been here before, and it didn't take long to find prime mussel habitat among a minivan-sized tangle of worm shells. Seed points out the tangled habitat anchored on the seafloor in the video recorded by the dive team. This is a fantastic uh, group of tube worms. So these animals, each one, uh, looks sort of like a piece of pasta, but they're growing together. Uh, they're anchored in the sediment. They're getting energy from the chemicals and the microbes that live inside their tubes. Uh, and it's a great place to be a tube worm. Look at all of them. It's also where the team recorded video of the newly identified and pink eel pout. My little fish. The color doesn't mean much on the ocean floor where it's cold and dark. There's probably no need for it to look especially flashy or to have extraordinary camouflage. The fish looks like a small eel, and some species have a downturned mouth, reminding some of a sad, pouting fish. Well, you can see they don't move very fast. And they don't go too far from their homes. So it's gone right back into shelter. Seed says the fish lives on the ocean floor, and while the pink fish stands out on video, that color really can't be seen in the dark water. And they also haven't been seen outside of this geographically specific underwater habitat. Ben Frabel is the manager of one of the world's largest marine vertebrate collections located in San Diego. This section is kind of um, the group of fish, eel pouts, and their relatives. Uh, so as you can see, we have quite a lot of different species. He's showing us what's best described as a fish library. The shelves, floor to ceiling, are full of underwater creatures perfectly preserved in sealed jars. This was Frabel's first stop to identify the samples brought back by researchers in 2018. Since the samples didn't match up with anything, Frabel turned to published literature. I've taken a look, I'm going through the books, going through references, trying to match them up. They're not really resonating with anything I'm seeing. So Frabel reached out to a colleague in Denmark. Peter Rask Muller is the curator of the Danish Natural History Museum, and he's considered an authority on deep sea bottom living fishes. He immediately recognized it as this genus that has only been described in the last 20 years. It's called pyrolycus. It means pyro, fire, lycus, wolf, fire wolf. Rask Muller knew immediately the fish was something new. Frabel says that helps explain the lack of scales and the number and location of sensory pores on their bodies. Those pores are key to helping the fish find food. These animals are living in environments that are pitch black, so they're kind of relying on not just their eyes, but other, other organs for, for sensing movement and prey and food around them. There are only four samples available to researchers, two in San Diego and two in Denmark, and Frabel says it's a reminder of how little scientists know about life on the ocean floor. The findings are published in the current edition of the journal Zootaxia. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.